Okay, so now we are going to talk about uh, something quite different. Uh, we will cover multiple master topologies using tungsten replicator. So let's uh, spend just a few words about uh, uh, my company and the product that we are uh, producing. My company is Continuent. We do two things. We do clustering and we do replication. Now when I say clustering is what uh, Max mentioned before. It's a high availability system that is commercial and is not only replication but on top of replication there is a management system that does everything for you uh, including things like uh, automatic failover that happens without manual intervention, um, backups that uh, uh, and restore that you can do with a single command, switch that you can do with a single command, multiple site uh, replication and a lot of more things that uh, I should spend one hour describing. So this is not what we are talking today. We are talking about uh, the basis of this clustering. So the clustering, the commercial offering is based uh, on uh, um, open source product that is called uh, the Tungsten Replicator and it does a lot of replication things uh, uh, among which uh, there is uh, multi multiple master capabilities. That said, let's see what is uh, this uh, uh, Tungsten Replicator and uh, why you should care about it. In in a nutshell, MySQL uh, Tungsten Replicator is a replacement uh, for replication systems like uh, the one used in MySQL, but it's uh, an external engine for replication. The difference between uh, Tungsten and uh, uh, MySQL Replication is that uh, Tungsten can replicate mostly anything that looks uh, like a database. So not only MySQL, but also other things. So we can replicate from MySQL to MongoDB. We can replicate from uh, uh, Oracle database to MySQL, from Oracle database to Oracle, and from Postgres to MySQL, and the other way around. But the majority of our customers uh, use uh, uh, MySQL, so this is the features that we are going to cover today. In a In synthesis, what uh, Tungsten Replication or Replicator does, it takes uh, the binary logs uh, from MySQL, uh, produces uh, one binary log of its own called the Transaction History Log, or THL for short, which is uh, the transactions from the binary logs plus metadata. And the metadata that we care about are most importantly, uh, the global transaction identifiers. So you get uh, global transaction IDs uh, from the source directly. Then the replicator on the slave will pull uh, information from the master, the same thing that uh, the slave does in my, in my SQL replication, and it will apply the events to the slave. So conceptually, it's very simple. The difference between uh, uh, MySQL replication and uh, Tungsten comes when you see the internals. The internals uh, are um, designed in such a way that you can uh, put several stages together whenever you are replicated. So if you want to replicate something very complicated, then you can just add a stage that will take care of this complex thing and put the complex thing into uh, into the stream. Uh, for example, when we, um, when we replicate from uh, MySQL to MongoDB, we have an additional stage that will uh, take care of uh, converting relational data into uh, JSON format. But the stages that we have uh, regularly are one stage that uh, 
gets the data from the master, and in this stage we we have uh, the extraction of the data. Then we have the possibility of filtering the data in that uh, stage. Then we apply the data to the transaction history log, the THL. Uh, the data then goes to the stage that where it is uh, pulled from the slave. The slave uh, takes data from the THL and puts that uh, in a queue. And finally, from the queue, it goes to the slave. In each one of these stages, we can apply filters. So uh, we can decide that we want to filter off some tables from the master, and it doesn't go even to the transaction history logs. Or we can decide that we want to add metadata uh, in a particular stage. For example, when we replicate from MySQL to Oracle, we have a filter that uh, adds uh, information when we extract data from MySQL where there are fields that don't exist in Oracle. If we have an uh, enum field in uh, MySQL that is uh, something that in Oracle doesn't exist and in Oracle we have a simple bar card, then in the master we add information in that stage so that uh, when uh, the, the record comes uh, to the Oracle side, instead of uh, being presented as an enum, has been transformed into a bar card. And so on. And it's very, um, it's very uh, practical and uh, extensible. Now, today we don't talk about uh, uh, the simple tungsten uh, uh, features. We are going to, to see how tungsten can do uh, multiple masters. To do multiple masters, uh, the installation is uh, a bit complex, so I will show you what is the, con the installation manually and how you can do the installation with a simple command. So we have created an infrastructure for uh, installation to make the installation simple. The infrastructure is a set of uh, um, shell scripts that uh, allows you to uh, install complex topologies with a single, a single command. We are going to use uh, a cluster, a set of clusters with four machines, and in each machine we will install a different topology. So the thing that you need to do if you want to test this on your own, you can either take your own machines or you can install an Amazon uh, set of uh, um, servers uh, using the information that you will find in our website. At the end of this presentation, I will show you a link where you can get the slides so you can try them on. How does the installation work in, uh, in practice? You have a centralized place from where you install. Uh, so if you have SSH access uh, from your staging machine, to the uh, places where you want to install, you don't need to go to each machine and install. You just need to install from a single place. What you need to do is check the prerequisites. This is the most difficult part. Again, also this you can find uh, in the in the manual. Or if you use this setup that is uh, in the documentation, there is a script that does the prerequisites for you. For example, if you create this uh, Amazon servers and you run that script, the script will uh, install Java, install Ruby, uh, create the users uh, for you, create the um, SSH keys and spread the keys around the, the servers. Um, and then it will make the servers ready for installation for you. So usually, what happens when you use MySQL, uh, MySQL servers with Tungsten Replicator? You have a replicator for each uh, host. And uh, you have a service that uh, is created in the master. And
and a corresponding service in the stream. So if you have a master service that is called alpha in the master, you will find uh, the same service called alpha in the stream. So why is this service important? Because you don't see services in uh, MySQL application. It's important because when uh, you install several uh, several masters, then you will have to identify them. Now, the thing is, when you install master slave, you have a single command that will install everything for you. You don't need to do anything very complex. However, when we go to uh, multiple masters, then we are starting creating new services. Now, we have two masters, and we have a service master service alpha in uh, server number one and a master service bravo in server number two and you see that you have a corresponding service alpha in server number two that is a slave and a corresponding server bravo in server number one that is a slave of uh, bravo so to do multiple masters in terms of you establish different streams and the streams go from a master service to a slave service. And each stream is identified by this uh, service name. So how different is the installation? Installation goes in stages. First, we install the service in the uh, uh, host number one, the master service. Then we install the master service in server number two. After that, we can install the slave service to receive information in server number one from server number two. And in server number two, we install the slave service that receives information from server number one. So this is a simple multi-master with two nodes. When we get to the specifics, this is how the installation uh, command looks like. We have a, a tool that is called Thompson Installer where we tell the installer to install one master and what we say in the master host we say the address or the host name of the master. Then we decide which is the name of the service that we want to install. And the list of mass, uh, the list of servers that uh, are in this cluster. At, the, at this moment, since we are installing these stages, we just uh, put the master in this case. In server number two, we do the same thing. So this is master two. The service's name is called Bravo, and it includes only master. <coughs> So, so far, we have created one master service in one server and one master server service in another server. They don't talk to each other yet. Then we have a configure service in master one. Configure service will tell in which host we are going to do the execution, what is the role of this additional service, who is the master, so this is, we are in server number one, and we say that the master of this service is in master two. And the name of the service is Bravo. So we are creating a slave, Bravo, that will uh, receive data from the master, Bravo, in the other service, in the other server. Same thing we do in master two. So we create a slave, and we say that the, slave, the master is master one and the service name is alpha. Now this is quite complicated and you, even though you can do this manually, it is going to become difficult and error prone if you do this uh, on your own. So we have this cookbook that will simplify your task. Now, when you install a master slave, you say, cookbook install master slave sh and it will do everything for you in this case everything means only one command so it's not doing 
that much, but even though it's good. When we do a multiple master topology, we have the possibility of installing using the same syntax. So we have a funny replication where we have a several, slay, several masters and one in the slay. In this case, we decide that we have a DB1 that is a master, DB2 that is a master, and DB3 that is a slave of both. This is something that you cannot do with MySQL. You can do it with MyDB10, but MyDB10 is still uh, in alpha stage. This works uh, uh, very easily. Now, multi-master is the way that we have described uh, before. This is uh, one multi-master with two nodes, where you have uh, uh, two services, and it's straightforward. Each service connects to the uh, corresponding service in the other server. Uh, it starts becoming crowded when you want to install more than two nodes. But you can do this. Now, this is beautiful because uh, compared to uh, circular replication in MySQL, there is no single point of failure. In uh, circular replication, when one node fails, then you have to repair the circle, otherwise the replication doesn't work anymore. Instead, in this case, if one node fails, the remaining nodes still can replicate. And you can grow the number of nodes, but you can see that uh, if you have four nodes, the number of services grows quite a lot. So if you want to have four nodes, you have to establish 16 services, it means 16 connections across the server, across the network. Instead of doing a, a full master-to-master -master, uh, topology, Tungsten allows you to do a star topology. So in this case, you have DB1 and DB2 that are the end point of the star, and DB3 that is the hub. How does it work? Every node is a master, so it has its own service where it uh, creates uh, data. So we have a DB1 that produces data in service DB1. DB2 is a master that produces service in service uh, DB2, and so DB3. What changes is that instead of uh, having a service that goes to everywhere, you have a service that goes to the hub only. So in DB, uh, DB2 will receive data only from the hub, and DB1 will receive uh, data only from the hub. Instead, the hub is the only node that will receive uh, data from everywhere. You can see the advantage when you try adding a new node. So you will see that the, the hub will have uh, four services instead of three, but every other endpoint will still have only two services. And so it's easy to add a fifth node because we are not crowding the network too much. The advantage is that uh, you have less services. The disadvantage is that the hub becomes a single point of failure. The joy is that you can do it, so uh, um, replacing a hub is not, a, is not extremely difficult. Uh, you cannot do this with the vanilla uh, MySQL replication. So try to use it and uh, get the best of it. Now, let's see how we convert from these diagrams to something that works in practice. We have a, a thing that is called a tungsten cookbook. So when you, whenever you uh, open uh, tungsten replicator, the GA version is 207, or the nightly builds that are 208, you will find uh, one directory called cookbook inside uh, the tarball. And inside the cookbook there are few dozen files that uh, uh, allow you to create a cluster very fast. Now the thing that you should care of are two files, common nodes and user values. And then you have uh, 
set of uh, uh, scripts for every topology. So in this case, you see show master slave, test master slave, clear cluster master slave, and it's also install master slave. And the same thing you have for start, all masters, and fanny. But you see, common nodes is always, and user values is always. So if you destroy a cluster of uh, um, master slave and you want to create a star instead, you can do that uh, using the same information. So what goes in common nodes, very simply, the list of host names that you want to use. So this is the most important thing that you need to do. You go to common nodes and edit this file uh, and put the, the list of uh, servers that you want to use. Then you have user, user values. If you are using the defaults, you don't need to modify, but most likely you, you won't. For example, you, you may want to modify the username and password that uh, you use to, uh, for this. Uh, you may want to modify the build-up directory. The one that you see here is the uh, build-up directory that you get when you install from RPMs or uh, if you install in Debian or Ubuntu. Uh, but my CNF uh, could be different, could be in different places. And the database port might not be what you want. And actually, in the example that I will show you, uh, you will see that uh, every uh, topology is using a different port because I'm using sandboxes put together in different posts. Uh, then the RMI and THL ports are the ports used by Tungsten itself. And if you want to install more than one replicator, you may want to modify that uh, as well. Once you have uh, edited these two files, then you can say install and name of the topology that you want to install. Now, before we go to the next uh, section, let's uh, see examples. I have uh, uh, four nodes uh, here. Common nodes. I have QA, R1, R2, R3, and R4. Uh, these are our mm, testing, some, some of our testing servers in Germany. I'm using this because they are very fast. Now, I have three uh, clusters. One is called All Masters. And here, in user values, I put a particular de uh, data, um, sorry, particular directory to install the all masters. I put a build log directory that is a uh, uh, sandbox uh, inside, that is uh, in every uh, server. And the same for the, my CNF, that is the, <coughs> the my CNF for the sandbox. I have a dedicated database port, a dedicated RMI port, and a dedicated DHL port. One thing that you may want to know is that we have uh, nodes uh, all masters, where there is the definition of the cluster and the definition of this, uh, the roles. So in uh, all masters, every node is also a master. So we have all nodes that includes everything, and we have masters that, again, has all masters, and slaves that has all nodes. So every node is a master, every node is a slave, and then the rest of the information is this, the list of services that we use to create uh, the services. Here you can put whatever you want. You can put the name in the seven words. You can put uh, your sister names, whatever. The important thing is that uh, you have a list 
of uh, uh, unique words inside this uh, small array. Using this information, I installed the, uh, the cluster. I, this is I installed already because it takes several minutes to to go. And one of the things that the cookbook does for you is, is this: if you say verbose equals one before you install, the cookbook will show you the list of uh, commands that are uh, executed so that if you need to install or modify this installation in a different place or with different uh, uh, conditions then you can take this as a template and do it. So we have uh, uh, this uh, old master installed and we can see the situation if we do cookbook show all masters and what do you see? we are for the first node four services where we have one master and three slaves the master is alpha then from the second service again we have three nodes the master is Bravo. For the third service, we have the master that is Charlie for services. And finally, for the fourth node, we have again four services and the master is Delta. In addition to this uh, a convenient uh, script that tells you the situation of the cluster, you have a script for every topology that tests the topology. It's a simple test that makes sure that the application is working. So we do cookbook test all masters. What does it do? It goes for to each master, creates one table and one view Using the view, we insert data inside the table. Then it goes to all the slaves and try to pull all the information, to pull all the information from the masters. So if all the records from all the masters come to all the slaves, the best pass. You, you see that uh, this does uh, 144 tests to check that uh, all the combinations of uh, data from all the masters with all the slaves uh, are working fine. So our multiple master topology is working. Do you follow so far? What is leaving? Yes? Um, when you listed the service names, is there any way to match a service with a master or it just picks out of that? Uh, the service name is just a list of, uh, of names. If you want, you can, if you have a simple um, host names, you can use the host name as the service name. For example, if, you're, if your hosts are called, say, uh, let's say, uh, January, February, March, and April, you can use the same words for services as well. But really, you can use any word at all. It doesn't matter as long as they are unique. But in order to like peg a service as the master to a node, it has to just be in order when you list them in the same order as the host names? Uh, you know, yes, it has to be in the, in the same order. Okay. I also had a question regarding the services, because I noticed that you listed actually six service names in there, while we only need four service names here. So what happens to the other two service names? Uh, the services are there just in case you want to add more, uh, okay. more service. More hosts. So I I tested this with uh, uh, eight uh, nodes and works just as well. Of course, if you if you install all masters with eight nodes, it takes quite a long to to finish because it, it has to install eight services in every. Uh, so it, it will it will create 64 services in total. Can you add like a fifth or sixth node on fly or? You can do it, uh, but 
uh, it will take quite a while. It's, it's complicated. We don't recommend it. And actually, we have uh, <coughs> the possibility of adding one node to uh, actually, we have a, a script that adds a node to a star topology uh, for all masters. Uh, for we will do that, but at the moment we don't have it, uh, also because it's uh, very complex. Now, before we continue, let's uh, have a quick look at the uh, other two topologies, uh, star and funny. So, again, in common nodes, we have the same information. In user values, we have different information because we are using the same servers, but different databases. So, we have a different database plot. Instead of 15100, we have 15200. Um, the server is deployed in a, in a directory named star instead of being called all masters. And the same goes for the payload directory, mycmf, and so on. Uh, the installation goes the same way. We book, install, star, and we let it go. In the meantime, we go to the other topology that is. Uh, we have the same nodes, we have user values, I forgot to show you what is the configuration for stars. Uh, Stars, we have a, a configuration that is similar to the one that we have seen for all masters. So you see, masters, all nodes, slaves, all nodes. Then we have a, an addition, two additional pieces of information. One is hub. So we have to decide which node will become the hub that will collect all the information and spread the information around. And then which service is the one used by the hub. So this goes back to the question that you were asking. In this case, uh, I'm choosing node number three, so I have to say that the service uh, for the hub is the third one in the list of services. Alpha Bravo Charlie, so Charlie becomes the hub. If I want to do uh, node number two, then I have to put Bravo. is similar in this case. Look, I have a list of masters that is node 1, node 2, and node 3. I have a list of slaves that is node 4, and I have the funny slave that is node 4. This is used by the, by the installation uh, process to create the funny slave. We're going to execute this. Cookbook install funny. And in the meantime, okay, this, the, the star is still building. Um, so I told you that uh, using the cookbook you have uh, simple commands to install and you have uh, also the possibility of using the commands generated by the cookbook as a template. You don't have to, to get them uh, to, uh, from the screen when you execute. Inside the cookbook, there is uh, one file that is uh, created by the installation. 
is called current install.log. Inside this file, you will see all the commands that were executed for the installation. So if you want to reinstall and modify, you can just do you can take the commands from here, add, remove, modify the information, and then run it in another place as it suits you. For example, if you don't want to use the cookbook because you don't have SSH access uh, between your servers, you can just uh, install this, uh, uh, using these uh, commands to install the separate servers. So, uh, star has finished. Let's see cookbook show star. Remember we said that the um, host number three is the hub. So what do we have here? In host number one, instead of having four services, we have only two. The master is uh, Alpha and the slave is Charlie. Charlie is the name of the service that is uh, master in uh, node number three, the hub. In node number two, again, we have two services. Master is Bravo and Charlie is the slave. In uh, host number three, that is the hub, we have four services. Master is Charlie and then we have one slave service for each one of the uh, remaining servers. In host number four, we have a master that is uh, Delta and uh, a slave that is uh, Charlie. Cookbook, test, star. We must make sure that uh, everything works. And then we have uh, the same amount, uh, mostly the same amount of information that we have before. Every slave has received data from every master. Uh, we have also the front in slave that is working. Good book. Show front in. In uh, node number one, uh, we have only one master. In node number two, we have only one master. In node number three, we have only one master. And then in node number four, we have four server services. One master that is local, that is used to um, put together the data coming from the other services and one slave service for each of the masters. Uh, <clears throat> now, to show how this works in, in practice, the, in the cookbook, in the latest uh, uh, release in 2.08, there is uh, one uh, file that is called uh, uh, start load. load data, sorry. In load data, um, we have uh, a complex uh, uh, complex command done for you that will generate uh, a lot of data in each of the masters. So it will take the list of the masters that you have defined in your topology, go to each master and start a server uh, server load in a different database. Now if we run this, you will see the commands, so you can uh, execute them manually if you need. And now you will have uh, four masters that are sending data to each other very quickly, in, and in each master there are different data. So, uh, Say again? That load data script is that just like a load uh, simulator tool? 
and something like that. It's a tool that is called bristlecon that comes together with tungsten, and it has a complicated grammar to, to, to start. So using this uh, raw data, you can do that with one single command, and you have data coming very really fast inside the, the, the cluster. Let's see this with the uh, in motion. You see that the data has, is being generated very quickly, and every every uh, service is growing because every master is inserting different data in a different database. So we are running quite fast <coughs> uh, multiple threads. Any questions so far? How would this uh, all work? I know that you were promoting also, you know, to, I evaluated that actually one and a half years ago. And, um, can, can you speak louder, please? Yeah, um, so when I was evaluating Tungsten, yes. about one and a half years ago, I know one of the things you, your company was promoting was it works well over large geographical distances. Yes. So is that still the case? Let's it say is still you, the case. You're spreading this whole thing, what you just you know, showed us. Yeah. You know, you have masters on one continent, uh, one, like two on one, and then, uh, or, or just does it just work like within one country? Okay, so the question is uh, if Tungsten is good to uh, deal with uh, multiple sites, it is. You, uh, we have, uh, as I said before, the commercial product that is based upon uh, Tungsten replicator. So whatever works uh, in Tungsten Replicator, in, in, in the commercial product, but also works uh, in the open source. The difference is that uh, the commercial product does a lot of things for you um, without uh, effort. In the, commercial, in the open source, there are things that you have to do manually. Uh, but nobody prevents you from uh, having a cluster of uh, uh, data um, replicators in one continent, another cluster in another continent, and making one replicator to uh, bring them together. There is, uh, uh, if you look at my blog, there is uh, one example of uh, something like that done in practice. The, the commercial <coughs> editions are something much more powerful that allows you to switch uh, with a single command from uh, one uh, continent to the other, or from a city to the other, depending on how you have uh, uh, installed your data. Uh, but the principle is the same. This is uh, asynchronous replication that works uh, with the principle of asynchronous replication. It's very fast server by server. There is the latency that is uh, due to uh, replication and uh, you, you have to, to live with the problems of uh, um, asynchronous replication, which I'm going to discuss right now, unless we have more questions about uh, the technicality of uh, multi-master. Okay, so, once we, we know that uh, we can build multiple masters. Let's talk about conflicts. Actually, let me allow me to, to be more specific about conflicts. And uh, tell you what is it. So, what is a conflict? A conflict is something that uh, you most likely have when you uh, run multi master. Um, if you if you are updating the same data from two different points, you may have a clash. So you can lose data, or you can uh, have data inconsistency because you think that uh, you modify something, but another master has done a different modification when when uh, you were not looking. You can have uh, a duplicate data, or you can break replication, or all things together. So 
you can duplicate data when you try inserting the same thing from two different uh, places. Uh, this usually breaks replication, which is a good thing, because if you break replication, you know that something is wrong, at least you can fix it. Uh, there is a popular concept that the uh, auto-increment offsets uh, uh, that you can put in MySQL can uh, avoid conflicts. That's false. It does not do it. If you use this, you will ensure that when you have auto-increment, the incrementation is different for each node. But this doesn't prevent conflict. It will uh, create uh, hidden duplicates. How does the hidden duplicate work? It works because uh, the auto-increment uh, value that is used as a primary key is a false primary key. In this case, we have a record where the name is the same um, and is inserted from two different uh, masters using two different uh, keys. And this will not create uh, a conflict, but you will have data duplication and this data duplication will go unnoticed unless somebody does some, uh, some checks. So the problem here is that uh, the data has a wrong primary key. Um, the, the, the problem happens because you are trusting the system that uh, having different uh, uh, offsets for primary keys uh, should shield you from uh, duplication. Instead, it does not. Data inconsistency is uh, when you do an update from two different place, places and then you end up with different uh, results. So in this case, you will uh, have different uh, updates in different servers for this, the same record. Because every record will apply the last one that arrives. And again, this does not uh, create any, any break of replication, so you will not notice. You will just have bad data. Uh, data loss is when you insert uh, in one place and delete it from another place, and it was not intended. Or you first delete from a place and you update it from another place, and then you are, you are breaking replication. Uh, so this could be detected if it breaks replication or if it go undetected depending on uh, in which order it happens. What can you do to handle conflicts? You can try resolving the conflict. So if you have enough information about what you want to do with the data that is conflicting, you can do something. This requires technology and information that um, simple uh, asynchronous replication does not have. You can uh, avoid the conflicts. This is what the uh, uh, MySQL cluster does. It has true synchronous replication and two-phase commit, so there is no possibility of a conflict there. If you commit something, it's committed. There is no conflict at all. Uh, you can try preventing. How do you prevent? You set some rules and say, I want to insert this schema only from this uh, server. The other schema I want to insert only from another server, and so on. You can have specific software that can help you enforce in the policy. And finally, we have a possibility of transforming and resolving. So instead of uh, uh, sending simple, serve, uh, simple transactions, you send transactions with metadata, and this metadata is uh, preserved for uh, a given amount of time. And within this window of time, you can resolve conflicts. Uh, so how does it work? Instead of inserting in table X, you say 
this is a record for insertion that will go to table X and this is the compare. This is a record for a, a update of table X and this is the counter. This uh, data will go to a window that will keep the data together for a given time and <coughs> When it's received by the slave, the slave will take row by row and uh, before applying, it will check if there is any row that conflicts. So it will, if it finds the same update that comes from two different masters, then it will apply a rule to, uh, pre uh, to resolve the conflict. If you have said, uh, I want the, the last uh, uh, record to prevail, that will do. The one with the latest timestamp will be applied. Or if you say, I want only uh, the authorized uh, masters to prevail, so if you have a, uh, a record from an authorized master and a record from an unauthorized master, it will uh, overwrite the record from the unauthorized master, and so on. You can define the rules. So how how do we stand? The preventing situation is available today. You can do that now with tungsten. You can decide in which masters you want to apply, uh, you want to modify, and tungsten will enforce it for you. Uh, transforming and resolving is almost there, meaning that we are using this uh, already to install, to insert data into data warehouses, and need some small modification to be used uh, uh, on a general purpose uh, way. Uh, and we are also planning to do resolving by increasing uh, the way uh, Tungsten stores metadata so we can uh, we will be able in the future to, to resolve it. Okay, so this is plan for the future. Let's see what we have available today. The conflict prevention how does it work? Uh, you have to define by schema with where you want to store or update things. So you say this schema will be updated by server X. You can define this dynamically. So you can change your mind and say, OK, I don't want server X to update personnel. I want the server Y to update personnel. And you can do that. It is it is applied on the slave service. So the slave will apply the will uh, check the rules and say, okay, this record comes from an authorized master, I will let it go. If it comes from a non-authorized master, then we have some strategies. You can say error, which is the default. If we get a, a bad record, we make a replication of failure. This is the safest uh, bet, because if we make the application fail, we become aware that we have a problem, and so we can fix it. And we can fix it before it becomes a, a bigger problem. Notice that we don't have a conflict here, because the master has applied the wrong record, but the slave has not. So the, the wrong record is only in one machine, not in two. We have a conflict when in two machines, we have different um, data for the same uh, representation. You can decide to drop. This is uh, unsafe, but you can do if uh, you know what you're doing and is what you need. Or you can drop with a warning, meaning that the, <coughs> the record is dropped, but you have a trace of it in the logs. How can we define the, these rules? We can define rules for unknown shards. So we can say, uh, whenever we see something that does not belong to the rules, we have not defined anything for it, then you can accept, drop, warn, or issue an error. We can have uh, unwanted shards. So we define everything, but we see the wrong shard being updated by a given server. So if the server that is not authorized is updating vehicles instead of personnel, we apply these rules. 
And finally, we can uh, define a white list. Uh, a white list is uh, when we say this uh, schema can be updated by every server. And this is useful if you want, for example, to run a test that in includes only one database. Uh, how do you uh, define this? You have to install one thing that is called sharp filter and then define the policies that you want to apply. There is one policy for unknown shard, a policy for unwanted shard. And then uh, you can say if you want to enforce the, the holes uh, which applies to the unwanted shards or not. And the white listed yes or no. Uh, looks complicated, but it's just uh, uh, simpler than that. Let me show you an example. We have a start topology in which we define what uh, we want to update in every, uh, in every cell. So in host number one, we want to update the employees database. In host number two, you want to update the buildings database. And in host number three, that is the hub, you want to update the vehicles. To define the rules, we feed a small file in the tungsten where we say which is the database and which is the service that is the master of that service. So personnel uh, goes to Alpha, buildings goes to Bravo, and vehicles goes to Charlie. We feed this file to every slave service, and then we are ready to, to enforce the rules. Let's see what happens when we insert something. <coughs> Correct operation in uh, server number one is that we create uh, something in employees that is called names. Everything is fine. All the servers receive the table. All the servers keep working well. The same happens if I modify buildings inside server number two, which is authorized. So this is a correct operation, everything is fine. Now, let's see what happens when I do something wrong. In server number two, that is uh, not authorized to use uh, uh, employees, uh, I create a table named nicknames. So what happens? Nicknames is uh, inserted in server number two because the replication works after the fact, but it generates an error in the hub. So the hub uh, receive the, receives uh, the, the transaction, checks uh, the availability, says that uh, the transaction comes from a server that is not authorized to do it, and does and generates an error. So when I look at the status of the uh, start topology, I see that uh, in uh, server number three, that is the hub, I have uh, alpha that is online because nothing wrong happened there, bravo that is offline error because the error came from uh, server number two, and charlie that is online because nothing wrong has happened yet. If we look at the detail, we say we ask for the status, it tells me that uh, there was an error in the last stage queued to the BMS when it was trying to apply, and it says rejected event from an unknown shard, and shard ID is employees. So it tells me that uh, from server number one to number two, Somebody was trying to update employees that was not uh, allowed. Um, how do we fix it? We simply remove the, the table using 7 under 1 that is uh, allowed to, <coughs> to modify employees. So we say drop table if exists. So whenever exists, even uh, it will uh, be uh, dropped. If you, uh, you know that it, it only exists in server number two because it was created there, so 
this, uh, using this uh, command, it will uh, break, uh, remove the unwanted table. Then we create the table again, and we skip the wrong transaction in the server number two, because it was uh, not allowed. And after that, <coughs> the application will resume everywhere with uh, uh, harmony. Questions? It's a bit complicated, I know, but you know, multi-master is a, a headache. You can do a lot of things, but you generate a lot of problems, and fixing them is not easy. You need to put some effort. Okay, Tanks and Replicator is open source, I mentioned this before. The code, um, the documentation, and the downloads uh, is all online. There are also, um, you can also submit bugs, uh, find, find the nightly builds. Every day there is uh, at least one new build uh, with the latest uh, uh, editions. And <coughs> The, the builds are published only if they pass all the tests in our test suite. So you don't find, if you don't find a build one in a specific day, it means that uh, that day the builds failed the test, so you are not published. And somebody screwed up, we fix it, and next day you will find that day. Uh, this uh, presentation comes from a list of uh, tungsten university sessions that we are doing to help people using our products. So we have uh, no marketing, all technical uh, sessions that we do online. Um, this month we have two sessions about zero downtime maintenance and update. <coughs> In uh, April, there will be geographically distributed uh, tungsten clusters and uh, replication between MySQL and Oracle in May. In addition to this, we are participating in conferences, so if you happen to be in Santa Clara next month, we will be there with uh, 10 sessions uh, on various uh, uh, topics covering uh, uh, tungsten. So you will find uh, uh, the information about uh, these sections and documentation and everything in uh, www.continent.com. The slides that uh, you have seen on the screen are available already in slideshare.net uh, slash continent underscore tungsten. It's almost time for final questions, if you have any. Are you excited? Confused? Sleepy? Too many beers yesterday? <coughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Giuseppe. Thank you all. <laughs>